Life of Bob by M. M. Ward Bob Smith went to the office every day, sat in the same cubicle every day, parked in the same shadowy, dingy parking space every day, and typed in names and numbers from green and white spreadsheets every day. He had long ago quit looking at the names of the accounts or the amount of money they were investing in this mutual fund or that stock. He never daydreamed about all the wonderful things it would buy him if it was his, as many of his co-workers did. Envy was something his wife lived for, always harping on him to take a promotion or a better paying job elsewhere. Edna was ambitious and beautiful and everything he wasn't. One day, Bob came home to no dinner and a letter. The harsh, bitter words hurt his heart because he loved her deeply, despite his oddly detached mannerisms. The next morning, he made his own breakfast. He signed the papers, wished her well, and just like that, Bob was alone. His only change was to stop for a fast food breakfast on the way to work, the same every day. The evening, he would stop at a different restaurant for takeout, meatloaf on Monday, Greek on Tuesday, Italian on Wednesday, Tex-Mex on Thursday, pizza on Friday, steak on Saturday. For lunch, he always got a pastrami on rye, except on Saturdays, when he was the only one in the office. Then he ate leftover cold pizza. On Sunday, the very sweet Puerto Rican widow who cleaned the church rectory came over and cleaned his whole house, did his laundry, pressed his suits for the week, and made him dinner. Years passed and she was replaced by her daughter and then granddaughter. They treated him kindly and were always inviting him to join him for the holidays, but he never missed a day of work. A gray Monday morning found Bob in the office, first as usual. Halfway through his first sheet, a young man stepped into his cubicle. Mr. Smith, I'm here to talk about your retirement. I, I, I am not interested. Bob stuttered in frustration. His heartburn was particularly bad today, and he regretted the delicious but spicy carne asada he ate for dinner yesterday. That's too bad because it's time, but the young man held up his hand when Bob looked like he was going to protest. But your loyalty, honesty, and dedication have not gone, un gone unnoticed. Truthfully, this whole department is about to be shut down. However, my boss has authorized me to offer you a very similar position in a new department at our corporate headquarters with a much more important commodity. Are you interested? Bob nodded rather than speak. Come with me. The young man led him away from his life's work, then rode the elevator down. Outside, a limo waited. But, 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 my c car, Bob stammered. Don't worry, we will send someone for it. You will, of course, have to move, but we will take care of packing your house. You will be assigned corporate housing near headquarters. We will do everything to ensure you are comfortable and have as little disruption as possible to your routine. The young man smiled. My name is Thane, Thane Hades. The limo drove for hours or perhaps moments before coming to a stop in a micro city surrounded by a lovely valley and majestic mountains. 
the building reached the clouds. People were coming and going with the bustle of a business day. Bob was led to an office. The windows looked out over the vista, but what Bob noticed was the piles of spreadsheets. I apologize for the mess, but the gentleman who previously held this job recently moved on and we have found no one with his level of skill until you, Thane explained helplessly. We really are in quite a lurch. We have several billion clients worldwide and with the records in such a mess, we aren't able to service the 151,000 daily we need to. Bob nodded. He didn't recognize the abbreviations, but the coding and the data entry he could do. For the first time in decades, he felt something like a the thrill of a challenge. I'll st start now. Thane smiled gratefully. Thank you so much, Bob. This is Angie. She will be your assistant. Anything you need, just ring her. A woman who looked remarkably like Edna came in carrying a pastrami and rye with plain potato salad and a Sprite. Your lunch, Mr. Smith. Angie, Bob is going to be putting in a late night, possibly many. Can you order his usual Monday meatloaf dinner meal? See that his car is retrieved and parked in his space and his home is moved to Gray Street. Of course, Mr. Hades, smiled. Mr. Smith, is there anything else? M my afternoon cookie and tea. Of course, oatmeal with raisin and a cup of Earl Grey. I'll make them fresh and bring them at three sharp. Angie followed Thane out of the office. Angie did an excellent job with the packing, moving, and unpacking of his former home into his new one. Bob only went to his little house, which was eerily similar to his old one, to shower and sleep for the first week, before settling back into his routine. Remarkably, Bob found he needed very little rest, and he felt better than he had in years. Angie also cleaned his house and cooked for him on Sundays, she took him to church, then to see the parks and museums around Elise. It became his new routine. Thane checked in on him once a week, sitting in his office and chatting about numbers and statistics as they ate pastrami sandwiches from the lunch cart. In two months, Bob finished the entries of all the backlogged data and could slow down. For the first time in decades, he looked over the names and codes and numbers. As he read them, he suddenly had a flash back to when he was a boy going through catechism classes. He wasn't entering transactions, well, not monetary ones. He was entering the deeds and sins of thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people he dug through the pages looking for the company name. He finally found something in a silver clip in his desk drawer. He stared at the business card with his name on it. Bob Smith, Executive Data Entry Analyst, Grim Reaper Division, Afterlife Unlimited, Death, Inc. Angie walked in with his perfect cookie and tea as she did every day at exactly 3 p.m. Do you like your new business cards, Mr. Smith? He, when he stared at her in shock, she frowned, offering, do you want me to change the font? I, I'm dead? He blurted out without stammering. Her brows and bow lips pursed, then she tipped her head at him. Yes, Bob, didn't you know? No. But my job, nothing changed. Is this heaven? Angie laughed. We are a subsidiary of heaven. 
most commonly called purgatory. Our work is very important. Your work is very important. Until you came, the reapers were almost at a standstill. But, but angels and, and clouds and, and eternal bliss, Bob demanded. Oh, that's just marketing spin, she grinned, then patted his hand in a kindly gesture. Haven't you been happier this last two months than you have been in a long time? Well, yes. He briefly wondered what had happened in the world of the living. Why me? I mean, how did they choose me? Angie frowned. Your soul was oddly balanced, and you had a specialized skill. Be so, because you were neither good nor evil, at your death you came here instead of being reincarnated. And you? How did you get here? Get this job. He stared at her. My mother had an abortion, and I went to the heavenly choir. But then Thane told me you were coming, and I asked for a transfer. She smiled at him with such love his heart hurt, because he realized who she was to him. I... I didn't know. I know. Have your cookie and tea before it gets cold. I'll bring you the numbers for Asia. She waltzed out, pausing at the door. Welcome to Death, Inc., Dad. Back at his office two months earlier, no one noticed Bob's spirit leave with the young man. In fact, no one noticed he was dead at all. His body sat in its cubicle, hunched over paperwork and keyboard for four days before someone noticed the smell. His company was shocked to discover they owed him his life insurance at his 1964 hire date rate of 20% per year, plus almost two years of paid vacation days that were never taken. The diocese lawyers made sure they paid. Almost half went to the small Catholic church Bob had attended his whole life. 20% went to the family who cleaned his house, and 40% went to Edna Smith. Edna, who was now four times divorced, fainted at the news she would get a few million dollars. In celebration, Edna got drunk that night, fell down the stairs, and broke her hip. She died a week later leaving her three children from, from her three other husbands the windfall. They rejoiced. It was the only kindness their vain and selfish mother had ever given them. The End Thank you for listening to Life of Bob. Have a blessed day.